Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be proving an inequality. We have x to the fourth power plus 4x plus 3, and we need to prove that this is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, this function cannot take negative values. So I'm going to be presenting two methods, and I'm also going to talk about maybe a kind of like a third method-ish sort of. Uh, I'll show you some stuff that will help you understand the concept here. Okay, let's get started. So I do have a quartic function, and how can I prove that a quartic function is always greater than or equal to If you had a quadratic, think about it for a minute. If you had a quadratic equation and you want to prove that it's always greater than or equal to zero, you would be talking about a parabola that is above the x-axis, but it could also touch the x-axis, right? kind of like a tangent. But with quartics, things aren't that easy because with the quadratic, you can say, hey, discriminant, the delta b squared minus 4ac, whatever you want to call it, is uh, you know less than or equal to zero, so it only has one root or no roots. Uh, but with the quartic, things aren't that easy. So we're going to have to look at it from a different perspective. And I would like to present uh, the algebraic approach first. So first method. I'm going to take this expression and kind of break it down. But before I do, I want you to notice that if I set this equation equal to zero, of course, we're not solving an equation, but the equation will help us understand what's going on. You will notice that x equals negative one is a solution. Now, why do I say that? Because when you substitute, it works. The reason it works, or maybe another way to look at it is if you look at the coefficients, sum of the coefficients, you know that when the sum of the coefficients is zero, x equals one is a solution. When is x equals negative one a solution? When you add the odd coefficients, odd powers of x, and then compare it to the even powers of x. If they're equal, then x equals negative 1. In other, in other words, uh, here the coefficient of x to the fourth power is 1. The coefficient uh, of x to the power 0, which is a constant, is 3. Their sum is equal to the coefficient of x, which is an odd power. So x equals negative 1 is a possible solution, and that is going to help us solve this problem. So let's go ahead and break it down. Si since we know that x plus 1 is going to be a factor. Okay, so I'm going to start with x to the fourth, add x to the third so that it's divisible by x plus one, but then I don't have any x cube in the original problem, I have to subtract it, but then I would like to subtract x squared so that again I'm getting uh, something divisible by x plus one because this is minus x cubed plus x squared, and then I don't have an x squared in the original so I have to add that, but this means that I have to add x because x squared plus x is divisible by x plus 1 again, same referral. And then finally, I'm looking at my equation. I do have 4x, but I only added x here, so I need to add 3x. And finally, I finish with a 3, and this tells us, this tells us that everything works. Great. So now I'm going to be factoring by grouping. Let's go ahead and do that. If you factor uh, here you get x cubed times x plus 1 minus x squared times x plus 1. This kind of verifies what we did. x times x plus 1 and then finally 3 times x plus 1. Great. So knowing that x equals negative 1 is a solution helps us a great deal in terms of factoring. And now I can write this as x plus 1 times a quantity x cubed minus x squared plus x plus 3. Okay, great. So now we got a linear and a cubic, but I do need uh, to factor the cubic as well. And if you look at our cubic equation here, I'm noticing that x equals, x equals negative 1 is a solution again. Why? If you look at the coefficient of x cubed, it's 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. If you look at the coefficient of x squared, which is negative 1, plus 3, which is x to the power 0, again, I'm getting the same situation. x equals negative 1 is a solution. So now we can go ahead and take out another x plus 1. And when I do, I also kind of need to arrange the, uh, all the terms. So let's go ahead and do that inside the second parentheses. We start off with x cubed then add x squared to make it divisible by x plus 1, and then we have to subtract 2x squared to make it equal to negative x squared here, and then I do need to follow up with minus 2x because I do need divisibility by x plus 1, and then to make x, I have to add 3x, and then I end up with a 3, which kind of verifies what we did, and then if you do the same thing pretty much, here we're going to be getting 
x squared times x plus 1 minus 2x times x plus 1 plus 3 times x plus 1. Great. Now we can just go ahead and factor. Notice that the x plus 1 in the first factor always stays. And now we can take out an x plus 1, another 1, and the other factor is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 3. Great. So it's completely factored except for the quadratic, but quadratic is easy to deal with, so we're going to leave it at that. Now, remember, don't forget our initial goal. It was to prove that this expression is greater than or equal to 0. So we kind of have to deal with uh, an inequality here. So my goal is to prove that this is greater than or equal to 0. How can I do that? Well, first of all, notice that x plus 1 times x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 quantity squared. And then I'm getting something like this. I put a question mark there because I'm not sure if this is actually greater than or equal to 0 at this point. How can I prove that this is non-negative? And there is a really cool way to do it. If you focus on the quadratic inside the parentheses, you'll notice, hopefully, that it can be written as the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 2. Great. What does that tell you? It tells you that this expression cannot be 0 and cannot be negative. In other words, this expression is always greater than 0 because it's a perfect square plus 2. Obviously, it's going to be greater than or equal to 2 all the time. So this tells you that our expression is going to be greater than or equal to 0 because x plus 1 quantity squared is always greater than or equal to 0. And this concludes the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at our second method. And our second method is going to involve some calculus. But don't be afraid of the word calculus because calculus sometimes can be easier than algebra if you have a good foundation. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to take this as a function, f of x. This is my function, and I need to prove that this is non-negative. How can I do that? I can differentiate it. When I do differentiate it, I notice that I get 4x cubed plus 4. And then I set the derivative equal to 0 to find the critical points. Because remember, if the first derivative is 0 at a point, you might have a maxima, minima, or uh, an inflection point. In other words, you get a critical point. Uh, so or the derivative does not exist, or some type of vertical tangent, some crazy stuff. Anyways, so here we have a simpler case. You can pull out a 4, and you'll notice that this uh, derivative uh, vanishes, which means disappears at x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 is our lucky number today. So at x equals negative 1, we have a critical point. What is that supposed to mean? Well, we'll make a table uh, and look at it from another perspective. So I'm going to make an x f prime table, and I would like to include an extra row for f of x so I can show you what's going on from the uh, f perspective. So the only root of the derivative is negative 1. As you can see here, this is my derivative, and the only root that makes it 0 is negative 1. So this tells us that uh, if x is greater than negative 1, like you can test out a value like 0, 1, 2, 5 million, whatever, you're going to notice that our derivative is positive if x is greater than negative 1. And uh, the derivative, the first derivative, is negative if x is less than neg uh, negative 1. Okay, what does that tell you from an f perspective? If the first derivative is negative on an interval, that means your function is decreasing. And if the first derivative is positive, your function is increasing, thereby having a minimum point at x equals negative 1. Great. So what happens if our function makes a minimum or minima or whatever at x equals negative 1. Let's go ahead and test it out. What is the minimum value? Let's replace x with, uh, what's it called, negative 1 on both sides. And here we get 1 minus 4 plus 3, which is equal to 0. Wow, great. We got a function who has a minimum at negative 1, and the minimum value is 0, which means the following graph. Here we go. Ta-da. Okay, this is great. What does this graph tell you? This graph basically tells you that you have a minimum at negative 1 and the minimum value is 0, which means your function f of x, x to the fourth power plus 4x plus 3, cannot be negative. And this brings us to the end of the second method. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, 
and bye-bye.